Today, I wrap Stina Blin and Associates with your agriculture update, and this is your weekend edition for Friday, the 28th of June, 2019, right at 3 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Now, before I go too far with the day's action, you can see that you got a stock market that's a little bit of all over the board as we're getting ready to see how the G20 meeting between China and the U.S. goes tomorrow. In the grain markets, wild day. You're not looking at misquotes. Down 20 cents in the corn, up 10 cents in the beans, down 20 cents in the wheat market. Now, a large part of this is off the confusion that the USDA presented. July corn planted 91.7 million acres. We're trying to figure out how that came out. That's bigger than it was last year. So what this does is we think that the markets didn't take into account the terrible June weather. The survey was conducted on June 1st and there's just a lot of lost acres. All you've got to do is look on the nightly news. Beans, they reduced by a big whopping uh, amount. They took it down, estimated they were hoping 84.6, they went to 80 million. We think that's even gonna be a lower number when it's all done. And you can see where the rest of the numbers come in, even the wheat, 45.6, that was the estimate. Too big, we think, in all these numbers. So what the government's decided to do is they're gonna hold another one of these surveys. The problem is we won't have it in time, according to the government, for the July report. This will be for the August. You talk about a mess. I watched the corn market at first go up because it depends how you were looking at the stocks on hand or the acreage. I think it went up nine cents right off the bat as the algorithm traders jumped on it. Then once the other numbers, the acreage came in, you dropped 25 cents. I mean, the moves were insane all within a minute or two. Pretty bold moves. When we take a look at the monthly area chart of closes, remember on this edition uh, on Fridays, we look first at a monthly chart, then we're gonna do all weekly charts so we get a bigger picture. You're still far away from the 18 month moving average of 917 and a half, you're at 899 and three quarters. If you can get over that, you're gonna start getting more bullishness built into the market, but that becomes your resistance point right now. As you can see, this was a rather wild week, did finish off three cents on the week as the market pulled back, but the pattern is still bullish. If you look at the pattern, you still have higher lows, higher highs. I define that as the bullish pattern. You'd have to get under 848 and a quarter to break that pattern right now. If we look at resistance, one of the resistance points comes here at the 18 week moving average of closes at 927 and three quarters with support back down at 873 and a half. When we throw on the Bollinger Bands, remember what Bollinger Bands are. They're an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within them 95% of the time. So one of the ways to look at them is potential resistance and support in the market. Often you'll trade sideways on them and from sideways action, you'll eventually break out and stay under them a little bit or get over them a little bit. That's typical. But 95% of the time you're gonna trade within the band. And so if the market rallies from here, I'm looking for 927 and a half, three quarters, let's call it the 100 week average up to the 940 level, roughly the upper Bollinger Band to be the resistance. In terms of momentum, it is still pointing up. In the slow stochastics on the week charts, I'm talking not the dailies, the week. I only look as the market pointing up, down, or sideways. I don't look at it as overbought or oversold. So I have momentum based this, and the slow stochastic upward. Bias is up because the market is trading over the 18 week average and that would be a potential support zone if it pulled back to it with resistance up at 27 and three quarters to the 40 area. In the meal market, you had two tests of the resistance that we were just talking about, the upper Bollinger Band combined with the 100 week average, and they failed. The market this week came down to a low of 308.10. The last break low prior to this was 308.80 right here, as you can see, and it's over my shoulder right there. So you've got the pattern of lower highs, lower lows, which is negated to a degree because the bias is up. You're still over the 18 week average close under 30620 and then you could say the trend is down basis the swing line 
the bias is down, and you'd probably have momentum pointing down, although right now it's not. In the soybean oil market, you've gone up to the resistance point of this 18-week moving average of closes, which has proven itself to be in the past often a zone that the market tries to play at to figure out what to do next. Well, you're there right now with the market trying to figure that out. You have the swing line up. You have the higher highs, the higher lows. The settlement was 28.24, which is over 28.18, the 18-week average, and you have momentum up. So this market's in an uptrend until the market takes out this 26.93. What you don't want to do, though, is stay much under that 18-week um, average. If the market takes out 28.72 next week, you could actually say that this is the low that shouldn't be taken out. In the corn market, as I said, a crazy, crazy day today. Uh, you were fighting the market uh, on the weekly basis at the upper Bollinger Band, and now you're pulling back. Now, there's some gaps in this chart that could be filled. The 420 area, if you look at the daily chart, you're going to see a gap there. I won't be surprised if the market wants to try for that gap. Momentum turning down, the trend up, you do have the higher lows, higher highs, and the uh, bias is up because you're over the 18-week average. Should you take out the 407 level, well, then I can make, I believe that's 407, then I can make the argument that back down here at 384 could come into play, and that is the 18-week uh, average of closes. In the wheat market, you got up to the upper Bollinger Band for the past four weeks. You just can't build on it. You, you get higher entry week, but you haven't gone that far one way or the other. The settlement price this week is 528. The upper Bollinger Band is 541 and a quarter. You're about right here. So you, you've given up a lot of those gains. Support all the way back. And this is what I call a stilt. When a market just goes like it did here from this rally, dramatically higher. We're talking a 25% rally in overall. Market's on a stilt could come back at you very quickly. In the cocoa market, you've been holding with the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. You're running into resistance at the upper Bollinger Band. Should this market take out 2440, you would have lower highs, lower lows, putting into play the potential for the 18-week average of closes. Momentum is flirting with turning down. You can see it right here. You have to keep this market up to keep that momentum going. In the sugar market, you came from a new low, got up to the combination three weeks ago of the 18-week average of closes and the 100-week got thrown back. And right now you're just sort of fighting a battle. You're right on the 18-day average of closes. Is there a trend? No. It's more a sideways market that's looking for direction. Even momentum has just gone sideways. In the coffee market, the coffee market's getting quite interesting. First off, it acts like a market that's made a major low right through here. It's come up to the upper Bollinger Band. It's held the first challenge of the 18-week average. And once it got over this Bollinger Band again, you have to go back on this chart all the way back to last October to see a market that got that strong. And from that level is when it broke down. It's looking more and more like this market could be setting itself up for a challenge of the 100-week average in the 112 area. In the cotton market, well, bearish. You don't need me to tell you that. Lower highs, lower lows. You're just running a big downtrend right here. Momentum still down, bias down, trend down. You get under the Bollinger Band, and then you pop to the right-hand side, and then you drop again. It's a classic bear market at this point. In the cattle market, a big reversal week. We made the lowest low of this recent break. Got a nice reversal to the upside. Will it carries the question. You now have a pattern of a lower low and a higher high. You have two areas of resistance, the 100-week average and the 18-week. Momentum, though, is still locked in on the downside. Bias is down as well. So even though you're negating a, 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 a bearish trend is set up by the swing line, you haven't got anything else to yet hang its hat on with it. In the hog market, I was pretty surprised today to see the hogs up at one point. Kept looking at the market, and I looked at yesterday's pig crop report, and I'm going, doesn't make sense. For the week, you're still down 415 points. You've got the lower highs, lower lows. This market could come alive if the U.S. and China struck a deal, but I think the question is that the most anyone's hoping for to 
or tomorrow is can the two sides agree to get their negotiations going again at the uh, trade table or are they just going to walk away and say, you know, we're too far away to do anything right now? Big guess as to what that's going to be. But you're still in a bear play. If the market wants to fall further, the 67 uh, cent area could come in. Uh, on the break. If you rally, the resistance is back at 78.50, trend down, bias down. You can see the stock market getting some life late in the day here. We'll see what it all means, but it's very, very interesting at this point. Can you imagine the risk going home? And I say that because when Presidents Trump and Xi meet uh, Saturday, the first time we're going to know a market reaction, forget what the press says, the market reaction is going to be Sunday night at 5 o'clock. Thin trade, you could do anything in that market. Right now, at least going into the final part of the day, the market thinks it's going to be a good meeting, and that's why you're getting a rally at this particular hour. Now, one of the things I like to do is prep my traders for everything. I may even put out a special Sunday while it's a subscriber, a morning subscriber video, I may put one out Friday, uh, rather Sunday night, to get traders ready for the Sunday evening trade as, the, as everything gets going. I haven't made up my mind yet. Certainly on Monday morning, and what I do is in the mornings, I, I try to record before 6 a.m. Central Daylight Time. I prep you for what's going on in Europe, what's going on in Asia, what the market's looking for in the U.S. If there's a big event like this G20 meeting, I'll be all over it going with you what happened in the evening before we take it from there. I will throw out specific trade ideas. I do talk the technicals and fundamentals and I do it in a different way that I do here in these videos. These videos I'm limited to talk the generality of what the market is doing in a trend. I can get very specific and say buy here or sell there in my morning video. That's the meat of the product. You might want to take a look at it. 26 and a half cents a day if you haven't tried it. You can get a one year subscription to it, by the way, for $156. You can try it for $7.95 for the first 30 days. Roll over to if every time after that, 30 days for $15, go to one year. You can even quit any way you want to take it. How do you find out more? Go to our website, www.irapstein.com. When you're there, go under Education or Research, Ira's Morning Subscriber Video. It'll tell you everything you need about it, and you sign up right there. I'm Ira Epstein. Have a great weekend. I will talk to you all Monday.